Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, we'll be going over the last of the legacy constraints that we've been going over lately. Uh, we've already gone over most of them by looking fields and solvers. Under legacy rigid bodies, we have create nail constraint, pin constraint, hinge constraint, spring constraint, and today we'll be talking about barrier constraint. So all these other videos are available to check out those constraint types. But for this video, we're looking at the barrier constraint. So I'm going to go over here to create barrier constraint and look in the options. Here in the options, you'll see just like in the previous videos, that the constraint options is actually the options box for all the constraints, not just the barrier one which we activated. Because we did go through the create barrier constraint uh, button, it did automatically choose a barrier constraint type. But here in the constraint type pull down menu, we can choose the other constraint types. And they all have different options that will become available based on which one you choose. The spring attributes down here, for example, are for spring constraints. The barrier constraint does not use the inner penetrate checkbox. It does, however, have the set initial position checkbox available. If you check it, the initial position sliders become available. Otherwise, there is the initial orientation sliders that are also available. Up here at the top, we have the constraint name option box here. We can type in a name for our constraint. If you don't type anything in, it'll just use a default name for the constraint whenever it makes it. So a barrier constraint. I'm just going to go to Edit, Reset, and you'll notice when I do that, when I reset the constraint options, it'll by default choose a nail constraint. So we're going to go back to Barrier. And with just these options available, we're going to apply a barrier constraint to an object. First, we need something to constrain. So I'm going to go to Create, Polygon Primitives, and we'll use a sphere. A little sphere here. With my sphere selected and my barrier constraint type selected here in the options, I'll create. So when I create a barrier constraint, I'm going to hide the grid here. It creates this kind of square shape if I and I have the rigid barrier constraint one selected. If I had named my barrier constraint, it would call the barrier constraint that instead of this default name. If I hit W for the move tool with my barrier constraint selected, I can move it. And you'll see that the barrier constraint is essentially this square shape and it has this line that attaches to the object that it is applied to. Now a barrier constraint can only be applied to one object at a time. So if you want to apply these types of constraints to multiple objects, you need to make one for each object that you want to constrain in this way. So what does a barrier constraint do? A, a barrier, by definition, is essentially something that blocks something else. And by applying a barrier constraint to an object, what you're telling that object is that it cannot go past this barrier. This barrier serves as an infinite wall in all directions based on the orientation of this square. I hit E for rotate, I can change the barrier constraints orientation by rotating it. So by rotating it like this, for example, it's as if saying there is an infinite wall going along through here in all directions, like an infinite plane that this ball cannot move past. Now I can, of course, move it over here uh, manually, but whenever I, but the whole point of a constraint is to use dynamics. So for example, gravity. So I'm gonna move my ball right here and I'm going to assign gravity to my ball. So I'm gonna to go to fields and solvers with my ball selected and choose gravity. So now my ball has gravity applied so in order for any kind of dynamic forces to function, you have to play the animation. So I'm going to go to Display, UI Elements, and I'll break this off. And then I'll check Time Slider and Range Slider to have my animation playback controls available. And you'll remember that line that attached between my barrier constraint and my sphere did not move with my sphere. If I scrub through my timeline, though, you'll see now the line attaches to the sphere. So that just needed to update with the animation moving and then that line attached to the sphere. So let's hit play. So you'll notice as it hits that barrier, it immediately falls at a diagonal direction that is aligned with 
the orientation of that barrier. Now the reason why it does penetrate the barrier is because it's based on the center point of the sphere. When the origin or center of the sphere hits that barrier, then it collides with it and slides down that infinite plane in that direction. It can be uh, less taxing on the computer to use a barrier constraint than, for example, a collision. So collisions have to calculate the point of impact by all things uh, that are colliding with it. However, a barrier constraint, because it's assigned to one object, it's only worried about that one object, and it's all based on positioning. So it doesn't have to calculate anything. It just knows that once this ball hits that position, it will stop and it would go no further. It now does, because of gravity, slide down the side of it. Let's look at some of our options. Control A to go into the attributes of the uh, constraint. We see down here I have rigid constraint attributes. Constraint type is barrier. Interpenetrate is not something that is available for this constraint type. But then we have initial position. That is the position of the constraint in space, X, Y, Z, if I move my constraint, you'll see that my initial position values are changing in real time because I'm changing the position of the constraint. Then initial orientation is the rotation of the constraint. As I rotate the constraint around, my initial orientation values all change as well. So whenever we, we created the constraint, we had the options of setting the initial position and initial orientation with those sliders. However, I find it personally easier to just position the constraint after the fact, just using the move tool and rotate tool to adjust those values. That's essentially the basics of the barrier constraint. It's relatively simple. It just acts as a wall for the object. That no matter what dynamic forces are pushing this object toward this space down here that's on the other side of the barrier, the barrier constraint will stop it. With my constraint selected, I go to my channel box. You'll see that I have this constraint option and right now it's turned on. If I turn this off by hitting zero and enter by turning it off because it's a boolean function so one is on zero is off so typing in zero hitting enter changes the constrain value to off instead of on and then I hit play let me zoom out some the constraint has been turned off that's what constrain off does it turns the constraint off so if you only want this constraint to be active at certain points in your animation you can keyframe the constraint uh, channel to turn on and off the constraint as you need it. I hit one and enter, I've turned the constraint back on. Hit play, and then it hits that barrier. So yeah, that's the barrier constraint. And that concludes the legacy constraints found under the fields and solvers menu. And we have to create constraints here. We have all these we have these five types. We'll continue uh, with our other dynamic videos in the future. Uh, if you have any requests for future video topics, it does not have to be about dynamics. It could be about anything in Maya that we haven't gone over. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, thanks again for your patience in my recording schedule. And I've been sick with the flu for the last week, and so I wasn't able to record because I my voice sounded really terrible. Uh, but it's past now, and I can get back to a more regular recording schedule. So again, thanks for your patience and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.